First question is from Elena JB. Does fasted cardio really make a difference? I like this question. Yeah, so, okay, so uh, for fat loss, no, it doesn't make a difference. Um, now, studies will show that when you do fasted cardio, that you utilize more fat for fuel while you do the cardio. And so when people saw that, they thought, oh, this is going to burn more body fat. It doesn't because at the end of the day, literally, what matters is the calorie deficit. And they've done lots of studies now on this. And they show that you burn no additional or you lose no additional body fat doing cardio fasted versus doing it fed. Um, and some studies show that fed cardio, your performance is a little bit better. So I can even make the argument that in some cases, fed cardio is probably better. Now, here's where fasted cardio might make a difference. You might get better at doing fasted cardio. So if you're wanting to improve your ability to perform while being in a fasted state, this might help you. Um, but no, aside from that, uh, there's no additional benefit. Um, it's and it's not, a personal preference thing. It's not just that. I'll add more benefit to it. So uh, I like this question a lot because this is actually how I found Lane Norton um, like eight, nine years ago. So right when I uh, was starting to get in shape uh, after I'd fallen out of shape, um, I was kind of looking for resources that uh, I thought in the space that were really good. Um, came across this guy, Lane Norton, who I had no idea who kind of specialized in competitors and people getting in competitive shape. And one of the things that he was debunking and talking shit about was fasted cardio. And um, I, I was drawn into it because it was something that I utilized um, and I was doing already and uh, made complete sense. And he does. And if Lane's a great resource for this. So somebody who's watching and wants to hear more of the science and as far as what's happening in the body that uh, to prove your point that you're talking about, uh, he's great for that. Now, that being said, even knowing that, I continued that. And the reason why I continued it was I had tremendous results from it, not because there was something that was happening that was so special that because I was fasted, was that never ever did I get up at six o'clock in the morning to do any sort of movement. In fact, if I was not getting up and doing my fasted cardio, I would sleep in. I would sleep in till seven in the morning, shower, have breakfast, do my normal routine, train at noon or one like I always do. Uh, and that was my routine. I began to do fasted cardio where I got up an extra hour early, go to the gym, walk, wouldn't run or do anything crazy, just walk for one hour and then go about my day, get my training session at 12 one, had tremendous success from it. So but behaviorally wise, right. you saw improvements. Yes. Yeah. And I think that's the part that you, you, you still have to factor that in. Of course. And that, by the way, that's the, why the bro science continues and why you still see all these competitors do it. Now, they try and you know. They find, don't know that's why it works. They, yeah, right. They don't. I don't think they, they think realize the fat burning zone. Yeah, so I, I think they don't. They don't realize that. But the the this was the only time that I would get up an hour before I would ever go to bed was when I was disciplining myself to do this fasted cardio. Uh, not to mention, um, normally my routine is get up and then have a breakfast. First thing I would do is have breakfast. So instead of actually having breakfast, here I was in this depleted state with no, you know, not a lot of fuel at all because I hadn't eaten since seven o'clock the day before. And not only am I not eating, I'm actually trying to burn uh, without any calories. So the idea that, okay, my body is going to utilize fat versus me having a bunch of food in me and then utilizing glucose first it was the theory and the idea of continuing that on and had tremendous success with it. And I still recommend it if you use it like that. But if you think you're doing something extra special, you're, you're really not. Well, this is where, I, again, to your point of, of bro science, like kind of perpetually kind of existing is because it's it's uh, honing in on something that it can become a habit and something like you're adding an extra amount of activity. Uh, and we all know as trainers, people that establish these in early morning time slots usually have the most longevity in terms of like establishing like new types of, of habits in the routine. So, you know, it, it makes sense that this could be an opportunity to now add, you know, more excess uh, activity that in accumulates uh, you know, your overall uh, towards the end of the day. Yeah, easier. I think the behavior stuff is always important to consider. But all things being equal, if you're going to get the same activity as you would if it was fast or not, doesn't make a difference. Um, now, I, it's personal preference. Like I work out fasted every morning because I feel better yeah. working out fasted. I know most people don't. Most people need to have some food a couple hours before they train for, for maximum performance. I just like working out fasted. I, I, it feels better to me. But other than that, 
No, it's it's got no additional benefit, all things being equal. But I think what Adam, what you said is very important because oftentimes all things are not equal. And one thing may work better for your behaviors than the other. And that's where the benefit often comes from. And we think it's like some you know, physiological magic that's happening, but it's not. It's the fact that you just you moved more or yeah. you woke up early and moved more versus if you didn't. I think this is it, this is similar to the bro science that would try and support the anabolic window also. Mm -hmm. I think part of why people saw so much uh, success with doing things like that is the ritual of making sure you pound a protein shake as soon as you get done with your workout. Like you would never uh, have a meal in the locker room of a, of a gym, but you know, it's become so ritualized as, as the anabolic window that you have all these meatheads pounding shakes before they even leave the locker room. Now, okay, well, and then they swear by it helping them out. Well, probably because it's they're an extra 30, 40 it's an extra 30 or 40 grams of protein. And without that, they may not right. hit their protein. They might not get it because you got to literally be intentional. About That's it. right. So it's a ritual. And so it. I found, I even would catch myself doing the same thing too, is especially when I was bulking and trying to get five, 6,000 calories. One of the things uh, I liked was if as soon as I finished working out, if I slammed a shake, by the time I got home showered, I'd already be ready for another meal. It was just another way for me to get more calories and more protein in saw tremendous value. It had nothing to do with the anabolic window. It was more about the behavior of me making sure I consistently get another 30 grams of protein as quick as I could. Hey, if you like this clip and you want to see more like this, click right here. But if you want to see the full episode where this clip came from, click right here.